look at these uh, three problems. Let's solve them and then we will uh, move on to some other topic. Okay. <clears throat> Note on the problems. Okay. Note on the problems and uh, I am sure that uh, you can solve all of them. Okay. We have uh, done such problems in the last lecture. Okay. So, there is nothing that uh, you cannot do. Okay. The first one is a uh, same type of problem that we have been doing. The only thing is here, this uh, distance of a screen is not given in the, in the first problem. Okay. So, I have a, a situation something like this. I have this lens here, I have this lens here and on this lens this parallel beam of light is incident okay. and in front of the lens okay, I am keeping some kind of an opening here, some kind of an aperture, a slit, okay. this is the slit, okay. then what will happen is I will get a diffraction pattern, diffraction pattern, this length is not given. Okay, it's not given. But where should I, where should I keep my screen to get to see the diffraction pattern? Okay, this is a convex lens, so it, it is focusing all of the light rays at the at its focus, at its focus. That means I should keep this, I, I should keep this at focal length of this uh, this uh, lens. Okay, focal. Length. It, it should be, it should be equal to sixty centimeters. Sixty centimeters. This distance is given. Question is. What is width of the central maximum? Okay, so I have, I am going to get the diffraction pattern like this. This is the diffraction pattern. Okay, that is how it will happen. It, it, I will see it here like this. Okay. It is like this. Okay, I have to find this width. This width I want to find. Okay, so this angle I know, I know this angle. This, this aperture is given. 0.2 mm. Okay, so this whole thing is this whole thing from here to here is a is 0.2 mm. I know this angle. Okay, sine theta. Sine theta is lambda over a. Okay, sine theta is lambda over a. So let's find out first of all. Let's find sine theta. Sine theta is lambda. What is lambda? It is 500 nanometer. So 510 minus 9. Okay, 500, 10 minus 9, o over 0 0.2, okay, so this becomes uh, 0 0.2 and 10 minus 3. Now, this is going to be a very small value. It is a very small value. It, it, it will be something like this. This is uh, 5, this is uh, 5, or let me write it as 0 0.5 times 10 minus 6 and 10, 3 from here, this becomes 0 0.2, so this becomes 2.5 and 10 minus 3. This is sin theta, a very small value indeed, okay. So, I, I can approximate sin theta is equal to tan theta, okay. That means I will write tan theta, this is y, let's say it is y, okay. So, y over d is equal to 2.5 and 10 minus 3, okay. So, what is y? y is uh, 2.5 and 10 minus 3 and this is 60 centimeter okay 60 over 100 60 centimeter i should keep my screen in the focal plane okay at the focus then i can see the pattern most clearly okay that's it this is my answer this becomes 1.5 mm i guess uh, 6 and 2 12 and 3 15 over 10, 1.5, 1 point, this is in meter, 1.5 mm, this is 1 mm, this is uh, 0.2 mm, 0.2 mm, and this becomes 1.5 mm, okay, this, this is spreading, okay, spreading of light, <laughs> okay, you got it, now the next one is very interesting, next one is very interesting, okay, let's solve it here itself, okay, oh, no, 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 not, not this, not this, this is only y. Okay. So, what is width? Width is equal to 2y. This will be 3 millimeter. It will be 3 millimeter. Okay. It becomes 15 times. The spreading is 15 times. Okay. Now, let us look at the second problem. A very interesting problem. 
second problem. Second problem is like this. A slit of width, uh, no, the hip here. I have this arrangement, the normal uh, single slit diffraction arrangement. Okay. So I am going to get uh, my pattern on the screen. Okay, here is what I am going to get. This is my distance here. This is capital D. Capital D. I am going to get my pattern something like this here. There is going to be spreading. Oh, well. It's like this. I hope that it's symmetrical. Okay. So, my, uh, my central maximum is going to be this wide, this much wide. This distance is A. Now understand this, the width of central maxima will depend on this distance, the distance at which I keep my screen. Theta remains the same, no matter where my screen is. Okay. Now I want my central maxima to be of same width, for what will it be? Size of central maxima is equal to that of aperture. Okay. I want my central maxima to be of the same size as aperture. Here. That, that means I should keep my I should keep my screen here. I should keep my screen here. Okay. Theta remains same. Theta remains same. I have to find this distance. What should be this distance? <laughs> okay. Now what is sine theta? Sine theta here is lambda over a. Here also, here also sine theta is lambda over a. Okay. Now this distance is d. So uh, okay, so I can write it as so I can write it as theta is approximately lambda over a. Theta approximately lambda over a. Now what will be this distance? This is this is a by 2, it's a by 2 here, this also is a by 2. Okay, so I will write a by 2. Let's say that this, this distance is x, let's say. Okay, so a by 2 over x is equal to lambda over a. Lambda over a. Okay, this is a by 2, a by 2 here over this distance x. Okay, so we get that x is equal to a square over 2 lambda. Now, what is the significance? What is the significance of this distance? Now, in diffraction, if I have this aperture of size A, okay, then on this screen, I get a central light fringe of much wider, much wider width, much wide, wider than this, this aperture. Okay. But if I keep my screen at some certain distance, at some certain distance, okay, in that case, the size of the central spot here will be same as the size of this aperture, this hole here. Okay. This distance is known as Fresnel distance. Fresnel distance. Fresnel distance. Okay. We write it as we write it as Zf. Zf is equal to a square over lambda. Okay. We 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 calculated this value, but I am writing it as as this. Why? It is because this, first of all, this is only valid for Fraunhofer diffraction. Fraunhofer. That means uh, that this, this is very at, at a very, very large distance. Okay. Only in that case, this approximates, this, this is an approximated result only for Fraunhofer. Okay. It, it will not be correct for Fresnel when the, when the screen is at some finite distance. Okay. So, this is just uh, an approximated value. So, Fresnel did the rigorous uh, mathematical analysis and he found that if the screen is kept at this distance, then there is no spreading. We can ignore the spreading. We can assume that from here to here, light is traveling in a straight line. 
okay and then all the assumptions of geometrical optics the ray optics okay what ray optics says that light moves in a straight line okay it does not bend but here in diffraction we have seen that light actually bends diffraction happens okay so fresnel did the rigorous mathematical calculation and found that if my screen is kept at this distance here then we can ignore the bending or spreading due to diffraction so that distance is known as fresnel distance okay it is equal to this a square over lambda okay we are getting a different value here it is because all of these values are under the assumption of fraunhofer diffraction that means when the screen is at a very large infinite distance such that all the rays are parallel okay so when you adjust for that thing and when you do the fresnel analysis you will find this value but that is going to be very very complicated okay that is not part of our syllabus but you have to remember this thing a square over lambda and now this is what we are going to use to answer this up to what distance ray optics is a good approximation for a lens of diameter lens of diameter 3 cm that means this is aperture aperture is 3 cm opening okay light is passing through that aperture that, that lens that becomes my aperture it is 3 cm wavelength is given okay so i, I will find my z f it will be equal to a square over lambda it is equal to you see this is 9 and 10 10 minus 4 over this is 6 uh, to 6 and 10 minus uh, 7 okay meter so this will be 1.5 and 10 3 meter okay it will be 1.5 kilometer a <laughs> large distance okay that means up to this distance all the concepts and uh, assumptions of the ray optics is valid that means whatever we have studied in ray optics is correct okay even if we consider the diffraction effects then also we can pretty well assume that light actually travels in a straight line okay we can ignore diffraction effects up to this okay so the diffraction effects become significant after this distance not before that that is known as Fresnel distance okay now let's uh, start another interesting topic okay resolution what is the meaning of resolution? Okay, that's what we are going to study. Resolution. Okay. Let me not define it. And you should also not be bothered about the definition. What is the resolution and what it means and all that. Okay. Let, let's forget. <laughs> let's let's forget it. Okay. Think of this situation. Suppose that I have uh, this uh, small opening here, a small opening, okay, and I have some source, I have some source S, okay, so light rays start from this source, okay, so they pass through this opening and then they diffract, they diffract and then they produce uh, a diffraction pattern here, so I, I, I get some diffraction pattern. I get some diffraction pattern. Now, what will happen if the source is kept at, let's say, some other position? Okay. Let's say that source is kept here in, in a different orientation. Let's say that, that my source is here. Okay. In that case, also, this, 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 these are the light rays. These are the light rays from the source. And this is my screen. Okay. So on this screen here, it will produce a diffraction pattern like this. Now, what is the meaning of diffraction pattern? And what it actually means is, let's say that, let's say that this is my object and this is my eye here. This 
This is my eye. Okay. So in my eye, this is my lens. Okay. But the whole lens is not transparent. Light enters our eyes through a very small opening that is known as pupil. Okay. So here, here, here we have a very small opening. All of this is uh, opaque. This part is opaque. This part is opaque. Only a very small part that is known as the pupil, pupil of eye. Only that, through that, only the light enters. Very small aperture, very small hole. Okay. And if I have this object here, I am seeing this object. Okay. So if my object is here, corresponding to this object, what I see is, I, I, on the retina here, actually a diffraction pattern is formed. This is my retina. Have you ever thought of this? <laughs> did, did you ever think that the image uh, forms like this? This is this is the image. It's actually a diffraction pattern forms behind the here uh, on the on this screen, which is our retina. This is our pupil. This is our pupil. Pupil. Okay. And if there is any other source, okay. So in that case, it will be like this. Okay. Now if I have one other source. Let's say that I have this source S1 here, okay, S1, and there is one other source S2. Two sources, okay, two light sources. In that case, the diffraction pattern corresponding to both will be formed. Both will be formed like this. Okay. Now, if this diffraction pattern, if the central maxima are sufficiently separated, Okay, so these two diffraction patterns will form. Okay, if, if I have my okay, local let's uh, compare it with our eyes, it, it, it becomes easier to understand. Okay, so this is my eye. Light enters through a very small opening here, very small opening, and I have these two points. Okay, so corresponding to these two points, okay, the diffraction patterns will form here on, on the retina. On the retina, okay. So this is one diffraction pattern, and this is the other diffraction pattern. Okay. Now, if these two diffraction patterns are well separated, then I can see them as two different objects. Okay. Then, then I will see these two points as two different points. Now, what will happen if 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 the separation between them starts to change? Okay. This is S1 and this is S2. This is S1 here, this is S2 here. Okay, so if, if this angle here, if this angle here is large, okay, then these two diffraction patterns are well separated. Okay, so we say that they are well resolved. We say that they are well resolved. Okay. So I will see these two points as two points. <laughs> this, these points as two different, separate, distinct points. So what will happen if, if the angle, if this angle starts to change, if, we, if it starts to decrease, then, then, then they will start coming together, okay? Then, then this, uh, then this uh, resolution, this uh, between the two maxima will start decreasing, okay? So if, let's say that I have these two points, now, now they are at this distance here, okay? Now such that. So here is going to be my diffraction pattern. Okay. Now the di now the diffraction patterns forms. Okay. So th this this will have its own maxima. This will have its own maxima. And then there will be there there will be minima. Now the diffraction pattern of this the first one. This is S one. This is S two. This is S one. This is S two. Now the diffraction pattern of first one it forms such that. Okay. Its maxima. This is its maxima. Okay, and the max and this is the minima. This is pattern of S one. This is the maxima, and this is the first minima. First minima. Now the diffraction, the, the maxima of second, the maxima of second falls here on the minima of first. Okay, now central maxima, central maxima of one falls 
on central maxima of 1 falls on first minima of other. Okay. Then this case is known as just resolved. Just resolved. It is just resolved. Okay. Now, if theta becomes even smaller, okay, if theta becomes even smaller, smaller than this also. Let's say that this is my S1 here and this is S2 here. Okay. Now that's how the interference, the diffraction pattern is going to form. This is the case of not resolved. Okay. So if, if, if I am looking at these two points, they will not appear as two different points. They will appear as one point. And this is a very common observation. Suppose that you, uh, you are looking at, uh, let's say, some vehicle, some car is coming from some distance. Now when the car is at a large distance, the two headlamps, the headlights, okay, they appear as one when the car is at a large distance and as the car approaches up at a certain distance okay they start appearing as two okay so if if if, if i have these two this these two these two different point these two different objects so if if you are nearby they will appear as two different objects but if, but if you move move away from these two objects okay so after a certain distance they will start appearing as one Okay, this is known as resolution. Okay, now, so this is a case of just resolve when when the central maxima of one falls on the first minimum of the other. In that case, they are just resolved. If the angle is less than this, then they are not resolved. Okay, so what is this minimum angle? Okay, this theta minimum. Okay, this theta minimum. Okay, this theta minimum is equal to 1.22 lambda over a. This is known as Rayleigh really, really criteria. Rayleigh's really criteria. Okay. So Rayleigh really, uh, really was a scientist. So he derived this uh, value. This, this is known as limit of resolution. Okay. Lambda is wavelength. Where A is size of aperture, size of aperture. Okay, and this theta minimum, theta minimum is limit of resolution. Limit of resolution. Okay, this theta here. Okay, what is A? A is here. This is the size of opening here. Size of opening. Okay. For example, in, in, in case of our eyes. This opening here, this will become A, the size of our pupil, the diameter of our, our pupil becomes uh, the aperture size, it is A, okay. So whatever is the instrument, if, if I have a lens, it will become diameter of lens, okay. pupil, diameter of pupil, okay. Like that. okay, let's do a few problems, then it becomes, uh, okay. Easier to understand. What is minimum distance between two points? Which can be resolved from human eye, okay, from human eye at a distance of, at a distance of, let's say first 25 centimeter, second is 2 meter and third is 100 meter.
ओके एंड डायमीटर ऑफ ट्यूबिल डायमीटर ऑफ ट्यूबिल इज इक्वल टू लेट्स से 2 मिलीमीटर दिस 2 मिलीमीटर वेवलेंथ ऑफ लाइट वेवलेंथ ऑफ लाइट is a 5000 angstrom okay this is the average value average value of visible light okay so when i am looking at some object so i mean the, the light is falling on my eyes the average wavelength from red to violet to find the average it will be around this value 5000 angstrom okay now very interesting problem Th think about it think about it i have this eye this is my eye okay and this is the pupil it's a very small area through which light enters so it it acts like an aperture or hole a small hole its size is 2 mm okay now the, these two objects are kept at some distance this is a this a is 2 mm the diameter of the aperture okay i'm solving this problem let's do it together then i'm going to give you more problems that you will try to solve okay now I have these two, these two points here, S one and S two, and distance between them. This let's say that let's say that distance between them is equal to x. Now the question is, question is, what should be this value such that I can resolve these two points? I can resolve these two points from different distances. Suppose I, I, I my eyes are at a distance of twenty five centimeter, twenty five centimeter. Okay, so I have these two points. I am looking at these two points from a distance of twenty-five centimeter. What can be minimum distance between them such that I can see those two points as two points <laughs> and not one point? Okay, okay, get it? Okay, so that means uh, the, the when we look at the diffraction pattern, it should be well resolved. It should be well resolved. Okay, so such that uh, uh, I get this pattern separately like this. So they are well resolved. Okay, so it's like this. I think it's not correct. The the minimum, the minimum of the one will fall on the maximum of the other. Okay, it's something like this. Okay. Something like this. Two types of patterns. They are well resolved. This is the case of well resolved. How to calculate it? Okay, so Rayleigh criteria it 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 gives us this uh, minimum angle. Okay, so that means this angle here, this angle here, this angle theta theta should be equal to one point two two lambda over a. Let's try to figure out. This will be equal to one point two two times lambda. What is lambda? Five thousand. Five and ten minus seven here over two and ten, two and ten and uh, minus uh, three. Okay, this will be equal to zero point six. Okay, one and five and ten minus four and five and minus four. Okay, so this becomes approximately three and ten minus four. It's a very small angle. Okay, so I I can write it as I can write it as x over l. This is x over l. Okay, so this becomes x over l. Okay, so x will be equal to three into ten power minus four times l. Okay, let's see what values we get. So in this case, if I want to look at uh, those two points. From a distance of 25 centimeter, then then what should be minimum separation? This separation x should be equal to okay 3 and 10 minus 4 times 25 and 10 minus 2. This becomes 75 micron. That's how sensitive our eyes are. <laughs> That's how sensitive our eyes are. If you if you have a normal eye, normal eye. And you are looking at two points which are separated by this value, seventy-five micron, a very small length indeed. Then also you will be able to see them separately. <laughs> okay, that is how sensitive our eyes are. Now, from a distance of uh, 
2 meter here. Okay, this x will be equal to 3 and 10 minus 4 and 2. Okay, so 6 and 10 minus 4. This becomes 0 0.6 millimeter. 2 meter. So let's say that uh, you are looking at this board. It is approximately 2 meter from you. This board, approximately 2 meter from this uh, camera here. Okay. So if I draw these two points, two points, okay, at, at a separation of 0 0.6 millimeter. Okay, it should be point, two point. Okay, then you will be able to see it separately. Now, if the distance between them it becomes smaller than this, smaller than this, then you cannot see the, as two points. You will see them as one point. <laughs> okay, do you see? And then here in the third case. Okay, so this is three and ten minus four into hundred. This will be meter. Okay. So this will be equal to 3 centimeter. 3 centimeter. Okay, the distance increases, the separation should also increase. The theta should remain the same. Okay, think about it. Now, one other interesting problem. Okay, so if the separation is 0 0.6 mm, if the separation is 0 0.6 mm, then I can see them separately from a distance of what distance? 2 meter. This was 2 meter here. If two points are separated by a distance of 0 0.6 mm, half mm, okay, then I can see them from a distance of uh, 2 meter. If, if, the dis if, if the separation becomes, let's say, 1 meter, okay, think about it. If the separation between two points it becomes 1 millimeter instead of this, instead of 0 0.6 mm, if, if it becomes 1 millimeter, 1 millimeter, then from then uh, from approximately what distance I will be able to resolve them? It will be almost double of this. It will be four meter. Four meter. Okay. Now let's do one problem. Okay. You will be able to appreciate this. It's like this. Two points are separated. by 1 millimeter. Okay. I hope that you are able to see all of this clearly. Okay. Two points are separated by 1 millimeter. Okay. From what maximum distance? From what maximum distance? They can be seen distinctly distinctly if human eye if human eye could see in x-ray of wavelength of wavelength 10 angstrom okay diameter of pupil diameter of pupil let, let's keep the same value, it is 2 millimeter. Try to figure out. We just solved a problem of this type when the distance between two points is 1 millimeter. Okay. Then maximum 4 meter, up to 4 meter distance, I can see them as distinct points, two separate points. Now if, if I am at a distance more than 4 meter, let's say I'm 5 meter, 10 meter, 20 meter, then they will not appear as two point. They will appear as one point. Okay. But that happens when I am seeing in visible light. Eyes can only see in visible light. Eyes are sensitive only to visible light. Okay. What if we had this ability to see in X-rays? What do you think? That distance is going to increase or decrease? Let's try to find out. You will get an amazing answer. Try to get the answer and think about it. What answer we are going to get? Theta minimum remains the same. Theta minimum is 1.22 and lambda by k. Okay. And what is theta minimum? Okay. With this distance here is, is x and this distance is l. Okay. So x over l is 1.22 lambda over a. What is l? L will be equal to xa 
over 1.22 lamp. Okay, fine. What is x? 1 millimeter. Okay, so 1 and 10 minus 3 and aperture size it is 2 millimeter. x 1 millimeter. Aperture this 2 millimeter. 2 10 minus 3 over 1.22 1.22 times lambda 10 micron 10 10 angstrom minus 10 okay this is 2 over 1.22 times 10 power this becomes uh, minus 6 and this becomes minus 9 10 power 3 meter this is approximately 1.5 kilometer. 1.5 kilometer. If you had this ability of seeing in X rays, so if I have two points separated by one millimeter, one millimeter, a small distance, you can see those points clearly from a distance of 1.5 kilometers. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's really amazing. It is really amazing. Okay. All right. Now let's say do one more problem. One last problem. Let's do. Okay. One last problem. Okay, let's go. Having an objective. Of diameter of aperture. Okay, what is the meaning of, meaning of aperture here? Same as diameter, okay. Of aperture 60 centimeter is mounted mounted on a satellite okay, moving uh, on a Satellite so, known on, on a spy satellite. Okay, uh, on, on a spy satellite moving around Earth at an altitude altitude of 300 km. Okay, 300 km. Okay. What is minimum? distance between two points okay uh, let me let me do it like this what is what is minimum length what is minimum length of an object on surface of earth on surface of earth that can be that can be seen that can be seen clearly that can be seen clearly from a telescope okay. if the telescope works works in first visible range visible range so average lambda is let's say 5000 angstrom so i have this second scope in visible range okay now second second x-ray x-ray okay lambda is 10 angstrom let's say this is the average wavelength of an x-ray Let's see what answer I get. Okay, so suppose that uh, I have this, uh, I'm uh, having this watch here, wrist watch. So using that telescope, can you can you see time in this in this wrist watch? You, you are at what distance? At a distance of 300 kilometers. <laughs> okay, can you see time in my wrist watch? Sitting at a distance of 300 kilometers. Okay, let's see if it if what minimum distance can be resolved. Okay. Here, let's find uh, in the first case, okay, in the first case, sine theta 
or theta is 1.22 lambda over a okay this, this is x over l is 1.22 lambda over a okay so what is x this is x the minimum distance that can be resolved it is going to be equal to 1.22 lambda l over a okay so in the first case visible range x1 is 1.22 into lambda is 5000 so 5 and 10 minus 7 5000 angstrom and length what is the length this is 300 kilometer this length here is 300 kilometers okay so 3 and 10 pi kilometer in meters so 10 pi okay over this is aperture what is aperture 60 centimeter 60 centimeter okay so it's like 60 and 10 minus 2 so 6 and 10 minus 3 no 0 0.6 it will be 0 0.6 0 0.6 now let's try to find some approximate value here so this is a how much let's approximate it as 2 2 okay 5 and 2 it becomes 10 10 minus 6 0 0.3 this becomes 0 0.3 meter that means 30 30 centimeter 30 centimeter it cannot see time <laughs> it cannot see time what if I want it to see time from a clock which is kept on surface of earth I will have to either decrease this either you decrease this value I want to decrease this either you decrease this or you decrease this wavelength okay let's see what what if the same telescope is an x-ray telescope you must have heard of x-ray telescopes okay the result the, the, the resolution increases great, greatly we have seen one example the last problem on the second case x2 it is 1.22 this is my wavelength here 10 and strong okay so 10 and 10 minus 9 10 10 10 and 10 minus 10 10 and strong 300 kilometer 3105 here over over 0 0.6 0 0.6 okay. this is approximately 2 2 and 3 it becomes 6 2 and 3 here it becomes 6 and then minus 9 minus 4 this is a 10 power minus 9 minus 4 into 10 minus 4 meter it becomes 0 0.6 millimeter 0 0.6 millimeter okay not only time it can watch much more <laughs> Okay, not only time, it can watch much more, okay, unimaginable. That's how it works. So, we use the X-ray telescopes to increase the resolution, okay. This is about resolution and then one last point, one last point about this diffraction, okay, and then we will conclude here and then we will start some other topic, okay. Okay, it's like this. Okay, criteria or condition condition for diffraction. Okay, condition for diffraction. Okay, let's say that I have this uh, general uh, diffraction setup. Fringe patterns are formed here. Okay, this angle here is sin theta is lambda over a. Here also sin theta is lambda over a. This is theta here and this is theta. This is theta. Now, under what cases diffraction happens? 
Okay. Now, if sine theta is lambda over a, what is sine theta? The position for the first minimum. Okay. So between these two points, I will get this uh, central right change. If I okay, then then there, there will be secondary maxima and all that. Okay. Now, first, if lambda is more than a, then diffraction not possible. Then there is no diffraction. So if lambda is more than a, it is not possible because sine theta should be less than a. Sine theta is less than or equal to a. So this lambda is more than a. In that case, the diffraction effects will not be present. Okay. Now, second, if lambda is very small than a, then sine theta is very small, very small. Okay, fringe pattern is crowded, let's say. Crowded, it's like this. This, this is going to be my fringe pattern. Okay, let's say it's like this. This is going to be my fringe pattern. Okay. So you cannot figure out whether diffraction has happened or it has not happened. Okay. You cannot separate the maxima and minima. Okay. So fringe pattern is crowded. Okay. It is not, it is not discrete. Okay, whole whole screen. Okay. Whole screen appears. Okay, illuminate. Okay, so lambda should not be more than a. Lambda should not be very small than a. Okay, now so for diffraction to be appreciable or to be significant, to be significant, okay. lambda. And A should be should be comparable. Should be comparable. Only then the diffraction effects will be visible. Okay, they will become significant. So if lambda, if wavelength is too much, then then the size of aperture. Then also there is no diffraction. If lambda is too small, then aperture. Then also even if there is diffraction, okay, it, it, it will not be visible to us. Okay, we cannot see the diffraction effect. Now, to see the diffraction effect, for the diffraction effect to be significant, it should be, both should be comparable. Lambda should be comparable to A. Okay. This is about uh, diffraction. Now, the next topic uh, in the same chapter. I hope that you are able to see all of this clearly. Let me just focus it once. Sometimes this focus is disturbed. Okay. Is that all right? Are you able to see all of this clearly? Okay. Let's start the topic. Let's start it. And then in the next class, we are going to continue. The next one is polarization. Next one is polarization. Okay, we will just uh, have one introduction. Just introduction. And then in the next class, we are going to complete it. Okay. Just the process. Okay. Polarization. Okay. We have studied some properties of EM wave. We have one chapter, whole lot of chapter. Okay. Electromagnetic waves, EM waves. Okay. We studied some properties of EM waves. Now. One of those properties is about <coughs> the direction of propagation and the direction of oscillation of the field, electric field and magnetic field. Okay. This is my x-axis, x, 
y and z. Okay. Let's say x, y and z axis. Electric field oscillates in x, y plane. Okay, electric field, this is electric field. This is my electric field here. Electric field. It oscillates in x, y plane. Okay. The magnetic field oscillates in a perpendicular plane. This is the os oscillating plane of my magnetic field. Okay. That, that's how it oscillates. That's how it oscillates. It's like this. Let me try to. Okay. It's like this here. So this is my magnetic field. Magnetic field. This angle is 90 degree. The angle is okay. So this, this, this becomes my magnetic field here. And this is my electric field here. The angle always remains the same. The angle is always 90 degree. Okay. Light propagates. Light propagates along. E cross B. E cross B. Now, e, if I do E cross B here, it is going towards uh, this direction. So that means this is the direction of propagation of light. Okay. Now, if if the plane of oscillation oscillation of fields fields, okay, E and B, okay. Remain same and do not change. Do not change with time or distance. Then such light, such light is called, such light is called polarized light. Polarized light. Polarized light. Okay. And if the if it keeps on changing, if it keeps on changing, then it is okay. Then it is what we call as unpolarized. Unpolarized light. Okay, now light from common sources, from common sources is unpolarized. And what are the common sources? Let's say sun, for example, sun, bulb, candle. Okay, all that. The common sources. Then the light is unpolarized. That means the plane keeps on changing. At the same point, if you notice, if you observe the plane of oscillation of E and B, it keeps on changing. Okay. With distance also, they keep on changing. Okay. At this particular point, both are in some plane. At some other point, they, they are in they, they are in different plane. Okay. That means this plane, the planes keeps on rotating. The pl okay. If you, if you focus only on the electric field, at this point, at this point, it, 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 it is moving in this plane. After some distance, it rotates. Now it moves in this plane. Now the planes of oscillation keeps on changing. It keeps on changing. It is known as unpolarized light. Okay. So normal light that we are seeing in is unpolarized. It's unpolarized. Okay. Eyes, human eye, human eye cannot, cannot differentiate. differentiate between both okay. we cannot find figure out so okay i cannot figure out whether i am looking it uh, in the light the light is polarized or unpolarized but some animals can do <laughs> i do not know those animals but there are some animals who can actually actually they behave differently in polarized light and unpolarized light that, that, that's how we know that they are able to differentiate but we cannot do Okay, now it is represented. How how it is represented? Okay, representation. Okay, how 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 do we represent it?
how do we represent it? Represent it? Okay. So this is unpolarized. Unpolarized we represent like this. So we will draw this circle and we draw these arrows. Now these arrows tell us that the light is the, the electric field is oscillating in all the different planes possible. All the different planes possible, okay? And polarized light. Full right, okay. So we represent it like this by one arrow. Okay. So this becomes plane of polarization. Plane of polarization. Okay. So at all the time and at every point throughout its uh, path of propagation, electric field will always propagate in one fixed direction. That's it. Uh, in one fixed plane, not not in all the planes. Okay. So this okay so I, I it, it can be anywhere it, it can be like this also okay it can be like this also but whatever it is okay whatever it is it is one fixed constant plane electric field always oscillates into that now how to produce polarized light how to produce polarized light unpolarized light is freely available wherever i see i see unpolarized light even though i i know i cannot differentiate but okay, but the light from common sources is unpolarized. Okay. In all the possible planes, the field, ex field oscillate. I want to convert that into polarized light. Okay, so we have certain methods. In the next uh, lecture, we are going to discuss those methods, and then we will look at certain other properties of polarized light. Okay.